Hello everybody and welcome back to another Hate Film 4 Express tutorial. Today we'll be showing you how you can make things explode in Hit Film. So before you even open up Hit Film, you need to find stock footage. And the reason being, while there is an effect for a large flame explosion inside of Hit Film, it's kind of bad, so you need to go find some stock footage to replace this explosion. There are many different places online which you can get stock footage from, but one great place that I find is footagecrate.com. Here they have a bunch of really really good video effects and audio effects as well as tutorials for your visual effects. It's all free and you can download 5 per day with a free account. If you go into video section, you can see all types of different video effects, including explosions. And in here, you've got tons and tons of explosions all of which you can download for free, just by creating an account. So I would definitely recommend checking this site out. They've also got sound effects and music tracks as well for you to use. There's also Action VFX, which have some really, really high quality stock footage effects for you to use. You have to pay for these, but they have really, really high quality ones, and in their explosions category, there are some really good ones here. If you just go into explosions, then you can find a whole bunch of different explosions which you can buy separately, or buy as a collection in 2K or 4K resolution, as well as the first one which you can get in 2K. However, be warned that these are portrait videos, so they are vertical, and HitFilm doesn't react all the time that well to vertical videos, so sometimes these don't work. But today, I'll be using assets from fxelements.com. They have a free clip of the month, every month. This month is Water Splash, and one of those free effects of the month uh, was a, a CG gas bomb, which I'll be using in today's video. So as you can see in hit film here, I've got this clip of a street scene in Italy, and you notice I've got two layers here, and the reason for that is that if I create a new plane really quickly, and I just drag it below the second layer, you can see that this is a masked out version of the biker, and the reason I need that is because the biker goes in front of the explosion, and we need to copy him back in front of the explosion. This is something you won't have to do for your shot, but it's just something extra that I'll have to do for my shot. So of course the first step is to just drag your footage in. I'm going to drag mine underneath my bike rotoscope layer, and I'm just going to position it in place. I'm going to set the anchor point to be at the base of the explosion. And then I'm going to simply scale it down and position it in my scene. Now the reason I've used the anchor point at the base is that when I scale it later on, it'll always scale around that point. You can play back to see whether the scale works. Mine's quite small actually, so I'm just going to scale it back up. Now of course this explosion effect is transparent, but if you got one that wasn't transparent, all that you need to do is go into your layer properties and select your blend mode to be add or screen. But something that works even better than that is you search up for either the demult effect, which is just really quick, you drag it onto your video and it will remove that black background. Or you can search for the luminance key, which is the same as demult, but it has a few extra options and settings for you to play around with. So once you've got your video into the timeline, the next step is to adjust its brightness and its contrast, because it won't perfectly match your scene just when you drop it in. You can search up for your brightness and contrast effect, or alternatively the crushed blacks and whites effect, to get this done. After you've got your brightness and your contrast done, you might want to adjust its colour slightly as well. So just grab your hue, saturation and lightness effect, and also drop that on. Once you've got your hue, saturation and lightness effect done, you can go into your master and change for example the saturation to make it more vivid, which is great, but it looks somewhat unrealistic if you bump it up too much. You can also adjust the shift to make it more red, or more yellow, depending on what your explosion is like. Once you've completed that step, now it's time to add a glow, because you can see, back in frames like this, it kind of looks unrealistic, just like that. So go ahead and search for your glow effect, and just drag it onto your video. Then you can mess around with the intensity, threshold, and radius to get a glow that you like. So, the intensity is just how strong it is, the threshold is how is which pixels it glows, and the radius is how big the glow is. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one glow which has a smaller radius and is quite intense and then I'm just going to duplicate this effect and in the second effect I'm going to have a wider glow with a higher radius. In both of these blend modes I'm just going to change it to add so that it blends slightly better. And because the add is much stronger I'm just going to decrease the intensity of both of these glows. If at any time you want to preview your work and you want to play it back without much lag, you can press this button right here next to the normal play button and it will start a RAM preview, which will render it out frame by frame and render it out really smoothly so that you can play it back really well. So that's the basics done and you can pretty much leave it like that if you want, but I'm going to do a couple of things that will probably add to it and make it a bit more realistic. First thing I'm going to do is to add a bit of lighting on the ground because it's not being reflected onto the street that much. So I'm just going to grab a new plane layer. I'm going to make it almost white, but not quite. A bit of a yellow orangey as well. And then I'm going to create yet another elliptical mask. And in this mask, again, I'm going to feather the mask. And in the layer properties, I'm going to set the blender mode to be screen. And that way it acts as lighting on the street as well. I'm going to make sure it feathers in. I'm going to move the mask as well, so that it's more in position. And we can keyframe this layer's opacity as the explosion comes into view. So on a frame like this, I'm going to keyframe the opacity so that it's zero. And then on frames like this, we want it to be super bright. So I'm going to keyframe it to be 100%. And then I'm going to make it go away around here. And that way we've added a bit of a street glow as well, and that looks much more realistic. Now this might be the point where you also want to add other assets. For example, you could get some smoke assets, or some other type of assets to add to your explosion to make it more realistic. But for now we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be adding a color grade so that it all matches together. So create a new grade layer, and go ahead and do your artistic grading. I've got a video on this already, but I'm just going to get a grade that I've already done and put it right on this video now. Okay, so now I've got my grade layer on. Of course, the video looks dramatically different now. And because this effect has also been applied to the explosion, it looks like it comes from the same world. And that adds to the realism of the effect as well. Something else you might want to do is add a shake, because explosions will shake the ground as well. So search up for your shake effect and drag it onto this same grade layer. Then, in your shake, you can keyframe things such as the amount. So when the explosion starts, I'm going to set a keyframe for it to be zero. And then when the explosion reaches its maximum shakiness, I'm going to make it quite shaky. After a little bit of time passes, I'll make it back at zero. I'm going to increase the speed a bit as well. But there's also one more thing that I can add, and this is of course totally optional, but I'm going to add a lens flare. So I'm just going to create a new layer, a new plane layer, and I'm going to make it black. Then I'm going to drag this below the grade layer because I want my lens flare to be included in this grade layer as well. I'm going to search for the light flares effect, and just drag it onto this new plane layer. And I'm going to choose a light flare that I like the look of. I just really like the feel of digital blocks. Because the explosion is yellow, I'm also going to add a hue, saturation, and lightness effect. And in the hue shift, I'm just going to shift it so it's the right color. Now in the layer properties, I'm going to set the blend mode to be add. And I can position the flare wherever I like in the scene. I'm going to begin keyframing the intensity values so that it changes as the brightness of the explosion changes. This is similar to what I did with the shake effect. I'm going to set the intensity to be very low. So that's the completed final effect. You might also want to go ahead and add sound effects from places like FreeSFX and SoundsCrate.com. All of the websites that I mentioned in this video, I will leave a link for in the description below. 
Now you'll notice that with the light flare, I've keyframed it so that when the cyclist goes in front, the flare turns off and turns back on again when he is not in frame. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.